Welcome back to another video. Sarcopenia, also known as muscle loss, is a common condition. It is a global, socio-economic healthcare problem that affects 10% of adults over the age of 50. Whilst it is normal to lose some muscle mass as you age, sarcopenia describes severe muscle loss that strays from the norm. It affects your gait, balance, and overall ability to perform daily tasks. Sarcopenia can occur naturally due to aging or other health conditions. It can decrease life expectancy and quality of life. So watch till the end of this video and I will share with you actions you can take to prevent and even reverse this debilitating condition. If you like this video and find this useful, please click the like button. Please leave your comments below and share this video. Hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of my future weekly video release. Please also subscribe to this channel. This is completely free of charge, but will help the channel to grow. Thank you. So, sarcopenia is a loss of skeletal muscle mass and function with age. It is now recognized as a major clinical problem for older people. The processes involved in sarcopenia are complex, but involve age-related muscular, hormonal and neural changes. So, how common is it? After middle age, adults lose 3% of the muscle strength every year on average. This limits the ability to perform many routine activities. Unfortunately, sarcopenia also shortens life expectancy in those it affects, compared to individuals with normal muscle strength. Prevalence estimates of sarcopenia rise from 12% for 60 to 70 years old to 30% for 80 plus years old. There's a growing recognition of a serious health consequences, even in moderate sarcopenia, in terms of increase in risk of frailty, limit mobility, increased falls, morbidity, and mortality. Sarcopenia has even been described as organ failure, muscle insufficiency. It is interesting that sarcopenia is not necessarily related to weight loss and is associated with major comorbidities, including obesity. Indeed, obese, sarcopenic persons may have even worse health outcomes. And sarcopenia is caused by an imbalance between signals for muscle cell growth, that is anabolism, and signals for teardown, catabolism. For example, growth hormones act with protein-destroying enzymes to keep muscles steady through a cycle of growth, stress or injury, destruction and then healing. This cycle is always occurring and when things are in balance, muscle keeps its strength over time. However, during aging, the body becomes resistant to the normal growth signals, tipping the balance towards catabolism and muscle loss. Other factors include immobility and a sedentary lifestyle. Disuse of muscle is one of the strongest triggers for sarcopenia, leading to faster muscle loss and increasing weakness. Bed rest or immobilization after an injury or illness lead to rapid loss of muscles. Although it's less traumatic, two to three weeks of decreased walking or other regular activities is also enough to decrease muscle mass and strength. Periods of decreased activities can become a vicious cycle. Muscle strength decreases, resulting in greater fatigue and make it more difficult to return to normal activities. Although decreased physical activities is a common cause of sarcopenia, however, those less frequent, some people with active lifestyles, may also be diagnosed with sarcopenia. This suggests that there could be other reasons for development of the disease, which include a reduction in the nerve cells that send signals from your brain to tell your muscles to move, a lowering of your hormone levels, and a decline in your body's ability to convert protein to energy. Another common cause of sarcopenia is an imbalanced diet. A diet providing insufficient calories and protein result in weight loss and diminishing muscle mass. Unfortunately, low-calorie and low-protein diets become more prevalent with aging due to changes in sense of taste, problems with teeth, gums and swallowing, or increased difficulty shopping and cooking. To help to prevent sarcopenia, scientists recommend consuming 25 to 30 grams of protein at each meal. Another cause of sarcopenia is inflammation. After injury or illness, inflammation sends signal to the body to tear down and then rebuild the damaged group of cells. Chronic or long-term diseases can also result in inflammation that disrupt the normal balance of tear down and healing, resulting in muscle loss. Let me give you an example. A study of patients with long-term inflammation resulting from COPD also showed that patients have decreased muscle mass. Examples of other diseases that cause long-term inflammation include rheumatoid arthritis, inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's disease, or ulcerative colitis. 
Another study found that blood levels of C-reactive protein, which is an indicator of inflammation, strongly predict sarcopenia. Sarcopenia is also more common in a number of other health conditions that increase stress on the body. For example, people with chronic liver diseases. And up to 20% of people with chronic heart failure experience sarcopenia. In chronic kidney disease, stress on the body and decreased activities lead to muscle loss. Cancer and cancer treatments also place great stress on the body resulting in sarcopenia. So, how to tell if we have sarcopenia? The signs of sarcopenia are the result of diminished muscle strength. Early signs of sarcopenia include feeling physically weaker over time and having more difficulty than usual lifting familiar objects. A hand grip strength test has been used to help diagnose sarcopenia in studies and may be used in some clinics. And of course, decreased strength might show itself in other ways too, including walking more slowly, becoming exhausted more easily, and having less interest in being active. And losing weight without trying can also be a sign of sarcopenia. However, these signs can also occur in other medical conditions. Yet, if you experience one or more of these and cannot explain why, talk to a health professional. The question is, how can we prevent or to reverse sarcopenia? First, nutrition. The interaction of age, nutrition, and levels of activities may be highly significant in the development of sarcopenia. If you are deficient in calories, protein, or certain vitamins and minerals, you may be at a higher risk of muscle loss. However, even if you aren't deficient, getting higher doses of some key nutrients can promote muscle growth or enhance the benefits of exercises. So, four nutrients that fight sarcopenia. First, protein. Getting protein in your diet directly signals your muscle tissue to build and strengthen. As people age, their muscles become more resistant to this signal, so they need to consume more protein to increase muscle growth. This study found that when 33 men over the age of 70 consume a meal containing at least 35 grams of protein, their muscle growth increased. Another study found that a group of younger men only required 20 grams of protein per meal to stimulate growth. A third study got seven men over the age of 65 to take daily 15 grams of supplements of essential amino acid, the smaller building blocks of protein which result in muscle growth. The amino acid leucine is particularly important for regulating muscle growth. Rich sources of leucine include whey protein, meat, fish and eggs, as well as soy protein isolates. Another nutrient that can fight sarcopenia is vitamin D. Vitamin D deficiency is related to sarcopenia, although the reasons why are not entirely understood. Taking vitamin D supplements can increase muscle strength and reduce the risk of falling. The next nutrient that can fight sarcopenia is omega-3 fatty acids. No matter how old you are, consuming omega-3 fatty acids via seafood or supplements will increase your muscle growth. Part of these benefits may be due to its anti-inflammatory benefits of omega-3 fatty acids. However, Research has suggested that omega-3 might also signal muscle growth directly. The last nutrient that fights sarcopenia is creatine. Creatine is a small protein normally made in the liver. Although your body makes enough to prevent you from becoming deficient, creatine in a diet from meat or as a supplement may benefit your muscle growth. Creatine may not be beneficial for sarcopenia if used alone, without exercise. So exercises can reverse sarcopenia because the strongest way to fight sarcopenia is to keep your muscles active. Combination of aerobic exercise, resistance training, and balance training can prevent and even reverse muscle loss. At least two to four exercises session weekly may be required to achieve this. All type of exercises are beneficial, but some more than the others. For example, resistance training. Resistance training includes weight lifting, pulling against resistance bands, or moving part of your body against gravity. When you perform resistance exercise, the tension on your muscle fibers result in growth signals that lead to increased strength. Resistance exercise also increases the action of growth-promoting hormones. These signals combine to cause muscle cells to grow and repair themselves, both by making new proteins and by turning on special muscle stem cells called satellite cells which reinforce existing muscles. And thanks to this process, Resistance training is the most direct way to increase muscle mass and prevent its loss. But how about fitness training? Sustained exercise that raise your heart rate, including aerobic exercise and endurance training, can also control sarcopenia. And how about walking? 
Walking can also prevent and even reverse sarcopenia, and it is an activity most people can do for free anywhere they live. Although sarcopenia is an age-related condition, it has been linked to metabolic problems like type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, and obesity. Because of this, it is difficult to determine whether it has any effect on life expectancy. However, it is clear that the condition has an effect on your quality of life, and these can be improved significantly by an effective exercise plan and proper nutrition. Remember, the information presented in this video is for information only and are not to be interpreted as medical advice. I hope you have enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to subscribe. Until next week, take care. Thank you for watching until the end. If you like this video, please click the like button. Please leave your comments below and share this video. Hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of my future weekly video release. Please also subscribe to this channel. This is free of charge but will help the channel to grow. If you are interested in improving your health and fitness or losing weight, if you suffer from or wish to prevent back pain, please take a look at my book, which is now available from Amazon Worldwide. Thank you.